Hey guys, what's going on? With almost two weeks out of Unleashed, we are literally smashing it. So, last week wasn't really a good week for myself, actually, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I did a lot of the things that I said I was going to do. It's just when it came to just following my plan, I deviated a little bit where I took a little bit of an, a bit more of an accountable loss. But, you know, it's completely fine. We bounce back from these things and, you know, it happens. You know, even, even myself this far into the journey, I do make mistakes. And I'm not saying that even yourself um, further in the journey will, you know, not reach those levels that you want to reach. You can reach them a lot sooner than myself. It's just obviously myself at that point, I did make a few silly mistakes, which going back and reflecting and just really kind of looking at things and looking at where I'm going in my journey I'm very grateful to be where I am um, and I think that's a very important factor to just always keep in mind when you do reach a level of failure just rem remember one major thing that it is a part of the process you need to learn from it most importantly but also um, don't forget where you are in your journey and I think that's extremely important like yes I've passed funding assessments I've lost funding assessments before as well but more importantly, I think the assessment doesn't dictate you as a trader. It's just an evaluation on your current ability to follow the things that you said that you would do. So um, as usual, Saturday this today, going through the pairs. Yesterday, I did kind of have a little brief look, but there was so much on. Um, I just wanted to do it with a little bit better focus. And today I'm feeling a lot better in this current mental positioning I'm in to do that analytical stage of things where I can just basically analyze the charts with a lot of clarity. So starting off with the DXY, I will talk a little bit fast. If you do need to slow it down, pause it, take some notes, by all means, do what you have to do. So weekly, looking at this we're looking pretty nice i mean i'm looking at this as a boxed off range we do have that slight near miss to this where this can potentially come up and fill it very unlikely at this point we still need to see some solid confirmation i think if we retrace more than 50 percent of this move down then i could understand that there could be a level of complexity to it so if we just look at the 50 percent of this we can then see that um you know, we are still way below that. There's level of continuation to the downside from here. More than happy of that. There is the level and understanding that we could still be in development of a continuation where something like this could just kind of form and then we tap into this and drop. So if something like that shaped up, I think that's pretty much a no brainer for myself. You know, looking at that as the mass psychology level where we're breaking out above, pushing back in, I'll be looking for something like that for sure. But it's way too soon to tell. You know, we are on the daily. We could still impulsively get to this point here and then reject. And then that could just be the simple value, liquidity taken out and then drop off. So, you know, there's so many variables on the DXY right now. It's a bit too premature to be forecasting something like that. However, what I do like about this, and I'll quickly go to it on the, the four hour, is that if we look at this as a significant level of interest, right? And we see this as the sort of hook point to it. So the price level, we kind of came up, scooped up, kind of retested the back end of this structure here, kind of dropped off, but we didn't really get the commitment and continuation down here. We retraced and pulled back up. And as we pulled back up, it was somewhat corrective. Now, if this was really the level that we were going to sell off, we would have had the commitment over here and we would have just continued going, but we didn't quite have that. And I think what's really more important right now is the fact that if we look at it on the four hour, how we tapped into this area was pretty much not the most convincing on the four, especially with that huge wick. Now, even though we wick through it, we have to ask ourselves our question, that question where are we moving towards this point? Is this enough for us to say that we're going to sell it? It's not really. I mean, it wouldn't be my typical sequence to be seeing something like that, especially going to the one. You can even see that it ended bullish. If that was full bodied price action and full bodied price action, then at that point there, I would probably consider to see something else. So I'm going to really be looking at this level as a price point. Um, and I think that low were kind of um, confluence level here. It's kind of negated now. It's kind of out of the water. It doesn't really matter. I think the real level that we need to be focusing our attention to is this point here. So plain and simple, I'm just going to be setting an alert on that and leaving that as is. I think this is as good as my analysis will probably get on this because I don't need to kind of overcomplicate it. I know my variables. I know what I'm looking for. But more importantly, there'll be more than enough time to react when the price does get there. So because I've already mapped out all of that stuff throughout the weeks, I kind of understand 
what I'm looking for. But then I also understand by inverting this that if we do smash through this impulsively, and let's just say we came down and we're trading over here and we get continuation, then I understand that we could just be continuing into this level here to kind of fill that near miss we saw over here. And then price just kind of comes in there. And then we start seeing the move kind of coming back up. So there's a few variables. We don't have to always be looking for the um, pivoting point at that level. We could still smash through and continue and even get to the high. There's so many different possibilities. However, the main important thing is that we just kind of drill in and just see this as a structure. Now, the main reason why I'm emphasizing on the DXY right now is because of the positioning of it, right? We can see that this was the area of liquidity where a lot of orders were sat for the continuation to the downside. We then got the commitment and now market is just seeking more liquidity in a sense. If we can get the liquidity that we need from this area here, then we can potentially see that as the continuation to the down. So I will be looking at that on the DXY, but I won't be taking the DXY trade. I'll be looking at the counter related pairs. So essentially that is my outlook for the dxy plain and simple just having um a ray line set over here with an alert and then just going to wait in anticipation to see that and then if i did want to just name that you know it would essentially be my level of override so um because i am anticipating price to be overriding in this section here so um more, more of interest actually i think a better one would just put a value area on it it's just better to kind of see it as a value area than an override because this would essentially have been my override. We didn't quite commit from the override. This would be your, your, your internal sort of one, which kind of broke slightly above. But like I said, irrelevant, super relevant. We know where our true value area is. Let's just keep our focus there. JP225 as well. Positioning is actually looking pretty good. So in another, um, in another way, we're looking at this to potentially fulfill this range so we can see that we are moving to the upside but we don't necessarily have to move there in one big move we can still move there in a phase of impulse correction continuation and i think that's more preferred how we come down to the low is obviously dependent on the structures that we can be presented with so if I look at it on the four, we can see that we have very solid commitment from the range high, push down now, and now we're trading below all of this area here, which is very nice. Retesting the back of it, which is not really a problem. We're then seeing internally, we're seeing some level of structure. I'm not worried about that subjective first touch. I'm more interested to see about something like this. If we can get something in that line here, I'll be very interested to just see that play through. So kind of just see something corrective over the course of Monday, Tuesday. And then let's just say we do make our way back up to this, to the retest of that level there. And then we can be looking for continuation to the downside. So like I said, there's quite a few variables of what we could be anticipating, but more so I am looking for something very clear. And then when the positioning is straightforward on here, then I can be looking to take a advantage play on the counter related pairs. So it is a very simple play for me. I'm looking for a one, two, three continuation structure with a reversal point there. An insurance entry for sure. How I would take the insurance entry, I would probably be looking for something on the 15. I'll be honest with you. I think the 15 would be a better play. Um, and I will just clear that off and just make this a little bit more clean. So we just call that a corrective play into this level here, into this region. Doesn't really matter where it is down there because we're not taking the counter long. And then when we do get to this region up here, I'll be looking for a push down and then clear 15 minute flag. Um, on the one, it won't show it as clear. And then maybe when we come down here, we might see a larger flag forming in this area here to then be the continuation. So. Like I said, I wouldn't be marrying the trade straight away. I'll be waiting for that extra confirmation, which we're basically seeing over here as the insurance entry. You probably could take a trade on the JP225 because my broker does offer it. However, I would have to kind of just pretty much um, consider it compared to the counter related pairs because really and truly there might be some better risk rewards on the table for some of the counter pairs, but JP225 does actually look like a really good instrument to be trading. Um, I would probably squeeze it around about 10, 10 ish. And then yeah, to this first inflection, about two, 
0.28 um, could be looking at roughly around about 4% in the low you know you could even squeeze in a little bit more if you wanted to just to kind of cover the high 3% to the low um, yeah it looks pretty good really really happy with that I think it has potential um, and we'll see how that plays Aussie CAD Aussie CAD Aussie CAD Aussie CAD okay so weekly Aussie CAD is still kind of looking like we are going bullish really and truly nothing has really changed here I think yeah we did have a week off kind of a bit of a drip in there but nothing has really changed yet even if we do still have a bit of stalling next week it's completely fine because right now we're still at a pivotal point we do have and if I zoom in a little bit more we can see here between value area one and value area two we can see that there was a gap there as well so in many ways if I just clear this off we can see here this was a very obvious near miss to this and then is this an obvious near miss to this high so really and truly I need to be asking myself the question of where is my value area and I think this is the most interesting value area now that I'm kind of you know practicing that and kind of looking at that in a more different way it's very important so um, we can then see here if we go to the daily this is something as well which is also very good because we're seeing this in typical sequence of our move up our correction and then our move up and then our larger correction to then have a larger move up which then we can anticipate to break that if we use our classical flag to pole and then we look at this from call it the break that would then break us out of this pattern here to then trade us into potentially this area here where we could then see the next level of interest so i would then put this as my value area too keeping it that much more clear i think helps a lot more than looking at each and every price point because i think my issue was i was getting caught up into too many intraday lower time frame positions but the fact is i was always told that i'm missing the intraday positions so it's kind of finding that balance in between there of yes there's a lot of intraday positions but which intraday positions would i much prefer to put my risk on or risk off so um let's have a little look here so what i'm seeing here now is we're seeing this level of correction the four doesn't really paint the clearest of pictures but i'm more so looking for something quite similar to this structure here so i'll just use this little tool i got over here and just see if i can see any similarities over the course of this and yeah it could just be in the region of something like that i think that would make a little bit more sense for me where i can see something playing just that corrective level probably looking at this i would be looking to break probably this low here probably tap into this so it doesn't need to but I would be interested to see if we can tap into this little area here to then see a reversal so it's a bit of a tricky one because this isn't your typical structure it's still quite messy um, I'm not too sure if I would really want to have this one on watch next week there is potentially a very good play here but like I said it's just a very big correction and I might just get caught up into a larger correction that's a bit of an unnecessary one so I'm gonna leave that one out for a bit I'm gonna come back this evening and um, before I fully select the pairs that I'm gonna go through tomorrow I'm gonna make sure that I'm 100% happy with them so we're gonna go through that again weekly is looking okay actually um, so we can see here on Aussie Swiss I'll be honest with you I'm not gonna touch this one I'm not gonna really over analyze it but what what I'd pretty much be looking for is just something very plain and simple you know kind of just jumps out perhaps maybe this then comes up but then even if we're trading at this area I'd be looking at that as the value area then this becomes something like that and nah, it's, yeah it's just not really what I'm looking for I keep it very plain and simple let's see if we get something like that comes in here obvious near miss to the low there so we are going to be coming back down to the downside at some point which i do like a lot um yeah i'll, I'll be waiting for this one to really shape up um I'm not looking for an aussie swiss trade i'll be honest with you so i'm going to take that one not waste my time um let's see aussie yen 
Obviously, yen is looking pretty okay, actually. I don't think I need to clear up much of this because our value areas do stay the same. However, if I do kind of zoom out to the monthly, and we can see on the monthly, yeah, this is looking pretty good. So we did kind of scoop, got that near miss to all of this, got that near miss to this, and then the near miss to this area. Yeah, this does this makes a lot of sense. I mean, even if we look at it from the downside, we cleared that, we broke the low, then we came here. We did somewhat near miss to this low. So there is that potential, but I think looking at how the momentum is moving, I'm not looking I'm not I'm not a hundred percent sure just yet until we've really got a move low. Like if we really drop and then we start correcting down here. Yeah, then then I could understand that the, the simple play, you know, or even if we just you know sort of correctively made our way down here and there was a lot of entries on the way it would make sense but more than likely just anticipating and looking at this i wouldn't be surprised now if we did kind of come lower and then we started making our way back up and then we created something like that which then had a bit of an extension on it and then kind of just carried on going and then tapped into the high value area over there and then we can kind of see what happens next that is something I'd be more interested to see, really and truly. I think that would be a very entertaining play amongst all. Um, the value area one, I think, is somewhat more insignificant at this point now. I think what's more significant is actually just seeing this high value area. This probably being my first main value area that I'm looking at, um, just because of that huge gap. And we could still play this range before we move. Um, going into the weekly now looking at it a bit closer so we are looking at this sort of level here um having a little look at that slap on the override low and then even at that point there see that's an impulse push up correction and then corrective back yeah it's a few variables that we could be seeing i think i'll be looking at this as my override low one just because we can bounce back from here and then this would obviously be the override low too so i think this is looking nice i mean i do i do like the fact that we heavily pushed up we kind of corrected build accumulation but i don't like the fact that we correctively came back up taps into high value error but the good thing about it is now it's giving us the potential for the sell the good thing about it as well is when we see it on the daily we did have that strong push away we then continued the next day, small pullback into this area, broke back, and oh, brilliant. So we have cleared this low here, which is also, I think, a level of significance to the move to the downside. So despite this pulling back with that wick and this kind of ending with that sort of pin bar, I think we could be just looking at this area as a flag now to continue. So consolidation in this area going into the fall, yep, that makes clear sense and now we just need to anticipate a good positioning the wick is a little bit off-putting i'll be honest with you but i wouldn't be surprised because we didn't kind of wick to anything significant if i go to the four yeah we kind of just wicked into this area here and then this isn't anything that's really screaming to me that we're going to the upside just yet even with that daily one candle compared to the comparison of everything we just spoke about no, not at all. So um, let's have a little look here. Yep. So we'll have a little look over here. Interesting. I'll, I would probably crop through that because I do believe that was a bit of news. Let's have a little look. Okay, it doesn't show any significant news. What time was it? It was roughly around about five o'clock as well, so just some liquidity. Perhaps maybe it's just a bit premature for us to be pricing that in. I don't necessarily think that it's anything significant at this point. I will be mostly focused to see if we can get a entry. How would we take this? Let's have a little look. So we correctively came in here. We pushed down. Yeah, I think it's one that's going to actually have to be a bit of a higher time frame play. I think I'd be looking at it more so just internally to kind of just 
yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we just keep it simple. Keep it very, very simple. There's just too much, too much noise going on in here right now. And I think this isn't where I want to be putting my, my capital, I'll be honest with you. I think if I had something like that, for sure, you know, I could then understand that a two touch over here would make more sense to go to the downside. So I, personally, I'm just not going to take it. Um, unless, unless actually what I could probably be seeing is corrective move here. We then kind of just, oops, corrective move here. We then make our way back up and then correction again and then we'll kind of come back up for one, two, three. And then we have something a little bit more clear, which let's say just even aligns with all of that. And then we can see that all as a, as a large structure here to then go short. And then how would that look on the four? Yeah, I mean, a four hour flag would make sense here. It would need development. Um, yeah, a four hour flag could, could actually be very, very, very good. Um, give it some time, give it some time. And we might see that See if we even get that near miss there, and then we fill it. Yeah, something internal. Too many variables right now to really be forecasting on it. I'll keep it as a pink sheet. Um, we'll, we'll have a little look at that. Okay, Aussie New Zealand. Now, Aussie New Zealand, honestly, I think it is just looking really good. I mean, it doesn't jump out straight away, but we have a near miss, obvious near miss here, right? And I'll just use these copy and paste. And then we also have another one down here. And then we have another one, coincidentally here. And then if you want to call it right now, we have another one right here. And I think we are moving to the downside. I think despite how everything is looking over here, the downside does look very prominent. So. I am going to be looking at that quite carefully um, to kind of just see how this plays. I truly believe we could be in a bit of a messier move though when I really think about this because there's there's a lot of variables really. We could be seeing something like this which could even come up to here. You know, it's just it's one of those ones where I think right now positioning is very very important. I think what I would mostly be looking forward to is a bit of a structured play. This kind of moves lower, we then move up again, this kind of correctively moves away. Yeah, not really my channel. Hmm. So he moves here, comes in over here. And then we have that in relation to this high, comes in over here, this near misses this high. This near misses that high, oops, that high, and then we take it all out and then we sell. And I think that would be an interesting play. So I think in terms of a forecast, yeah, that's that's going to be the one that I'm going to go with um, if I am going to be taking this. So I'll come back and think about this one compared to what, I've, what else I see on board today, but that is looking good. Um, we are looking to play the short play on this, just to clarify, there's just liquidity sitting in this area here. We're just going to take that liquidity out. So let's just put that as our point of reference. Um, and we'll just have to wait for that to kind of come through. But coincidentally, it does shape up with this area here, which I do like. So we'll have to wait and see. Aussie US dollar. Once again, this kind of goes in line with what we were saying about the DXY. Um, I think. Sometimes we go back historically and we learn from structures and we see how they played. And I think right now we're seeing this on Aussie US dollar where we will come back and study this and be like, wow, the abundance of opportunity. So I'm going to quickly just jump on the weekly and we can see here that really and truly this isn't the aggressive momentum that I'm looking for just yet. It does show promising upside, but really and truly this is not my typical sequence. And I'm not coming from a major value area. So this level here, which isn't my major value area, but it is a significant level 
this sort of consolidation so I'll just put this down as a value area one okay we're correctively coming into it but we haven't quite tapped into it and then the second point I'm looking at is looking at this little bit of price here how did we come to the top there and if I look at it over here we're not really breaking it impulsively you know what if, if this was going to come to the upside and we were in that impulsive behavior I would have then really looked for this is the correction and then smash through it start correcting again and continue to the upside but we're not seeing that what we're actually seeing here is just this very corrective sort of choppy sort of level here for then this to just kind of do what it has to do and drop perhaps there's the element of something larger being created here as well but I don't think I don't think I'm really going to be convinced on that I think Aussie US dollar has massive downside potential right now thing is that I'm going against the DXY on that so if the DXY has massive upside potential then you know then we would see massive downside potential so that's why we have to kind of see that what are we playing here we're playing Aussie US dollar we're playing the DXY and really and truly the DXY is going to be leading price so if the DXY does pivot and go to the downside we will see this go to the upside if vice versa so what I want to see here now is on the four are we going to get a clear continuation to the downside because right now we're just kind of stuck in this very messy area even if this kind of was the you know the expanding is this going to come in here to then push up create a flag and then continue and go to the upside that is a possibility given how the dxy is performing however we can see that this is a larger structure early on in the run and it's on the daily as well you know so i'm kind of just not really feeling this as the buy but at the same time i look at it on the weekly and i'm just seeing momentum strong strong candle okay small consolidation there. strong momentum strong momentum retrace consolidation to continue but we need to see strong impulse so until we see that we won't know because we haven't technically broken this just yet but we did approach it correctively from a internal structure but on the weekly we can see that we are you know the behavior is quite quite momentum filled so market's feeling very indecisive at this point really and truly but with the dxy shaping up we could probably see something else so i'm not going to be looking at that as the structure to be honest i'm going to be looking at this as the value area um, mark that on or call it the override i would say looking at this as the override to then see how we then approach this high so i would like to see that we kind of come in here we push up significantly we create a clear flag after that sort of four hour impulse and then we can just kind of correct and kind of make our way higher and then as the dxy shaping up we can see the stuff happening over here so that's what i'm going to basically be looking at um and i'll just clearly put that on here push down push up continuation and then we move to the upside and i'll clear that one off perfect and then in terms of an entry obviously this then kind of goes into your style of entry for me i do look for the the risk entry if available if applicable depending if the high structure is in line and the variations of high risk low risk but you could probably take that with about yeah fifth i would say just go probably 17 to be safe personally um 16 even is pretty good if you can get that in there um and yeah that's that's definitely still still pretty decent in terms of a risk reward i mean eight percent to the high with the potential if the dxy starts shooting to the downside which right now is is the dominant trend we could see a good play there so definitely want to point that out and yeah well before i go on to the swiss pairs cad pairs sorry take a small break and then we'll jump into that wicked and we're back so we're looking at cad swiss probably for you guys that did make no difference uh we're looking at cad swiss and yeah not yet i think this still looks like continuation to go lower not convinced that this is enough in comparison to all of this and then you're kind of looking at that i would say that this could easily turn into you know 
something like that and then kind of just drop off again and then wouldn't be surprised so keep that in mind um but yeah right now i wouldn't even be looking at a buy really and truly with the way that momentum is kind of kicked in i think when i would entertain it is if we're trading all the way back up here and we're seeing something very clear as day and we kind of mimic that price action but with that sitting there as an interesting sort of continue that sort of move that's what i'm looking at so can switch off the board for me and cad yen cad yen look honestly i think just like Aussie Yen, we had the potential for that one, two, three up here, uh, where we were kind of just kind of hovering, and we just didn't get the commitment. It is what it is, you know. Sometimes we just take a message from the market, but what is interesting is we did kind of come into that low there. So it now opens up the door of curiosity, where if we were going to break the low, surely we would have closed and broken it. If we, and it just kind of makes me really think about this as a whole because the higher time frame structure on the weekly we're still bullish we are, we, are, we are obviously still bullish to the upside and i just need to really see some confirmation that we're going bull because right now it's a very indecisive point for me i'll be honest with you just because that's so much momentum in there i can't really say that this is the continuation but the one thing that i do like about all of this is the fact of the matter that we've cleared pretty much this whole area here take away that override high after but um yeah we, we we can basically see that we've kind of cleared this but then we're just kind of trading in this zone which at the same time it's kind of it's one of those things where i think now that we see it for what it is are we in this sort of larger range and is that our continuation pattern so all of this being acting as you know the, the the messier sort of move correction move got a bit corrective in there but comes down and then all of this is just accumulation for that move and that's the leg i really want to be in but we're way away from that right now so understanding those as the possibilities and we are coming from this area of value as well where you know a lot of liquidity and orders are probably sitting in this area as well right now i think that a lot of them have been washed out for sure but it's just there's so many questions i have right now and only price will be able to tell me in time and what i'm really interested in to see here right now is what is the gameplay genuinely because i don't really think that this is my go-to structure just because of the size of that in comparison to that move it's possible but it's not my go-to um do i think we're going to come all the way back down here it's i don't think it's likely but it's possible um there's massive room if we smash through this and just create something clear and intentional which could probably take a course of maybe two three weeks maybe two weeks probably of just larger correction here that would make sense then to continue to the downside right now it's just premature i think it's just because of the amount of like that push which yes in some levels on some pairs it was anticipated but it just wasn't the easiest to get involved on i think there was you could probably make out some high risk entries in there but nothing off off low risk that could have really been taken advantage of in my opinion so I'm going to just leave that one on for now. I'll leave it off. If we do push up, start creating this, and then we move higher. Even at that point there, I just I just wouldn't really be comfortable with taking that. Because I look at it on the daily. and Or even, yeah. Yeah, look at it on the daily. And still have that massive wick too. Where the chances are that might probably be filled. And I think given all of this i don't know i don't really see it as a solid double bottom right now i see it as a bearish or a tap in rejection but now potential wick fill so it could get messy you know we might just see some very sort of corrective structure in here and then go i just right now i'm just not sure so kajen i can't 
really make it out just yet perhaps maybe when i will compare it with some other traders that i know speak to them and also my mentors then i can probably get more clarity on this one but i'll be honest with you it's just right now it's one of those ones where even if i invert it which i think would probably help a lot it just doesn't really scream to me that we're in that sort of that move to that to the upside you know to the upside here it just kind of shows me that we're kind of in this range and that move down into this area i would i would be more than happy to see this kind of you know kind of play into here and then come back up play that and then see that as a as a move okay cool but it's unlikely i think what we're going to see now is maybe even a internal sort of corrective move back into that level breaking the high push back in flag and then continue to that downside uh, to the upside there it's possible but like i said it's just there's too many variables there's more risks involved it's just one of those ones where i think i'll get tagged in and out probably take an entry which will be good we end up with a break even right now it's just not one that i'm really feeling the sequence is just way too off for me at this point in time unless it gets clearer we'll re-evaluate but i think by next week i'll get a clear message only because of the weekly positioning i want to see that weekly really smash through this close down below here and then look for clear continuation to the downside and unfortunately that is going to take another weekly candle for me to get involved on that so i will leave that one for now swiss yen on the other hand though swiss yen has massive downside potential um it's just not the pair that i want to be going short on really it's just until we've cleared this high here i'm not going to really be keeping a strong short bias on we're still trickling above you know and then this could just get a little bit more messy and just continue to go to the upside i would want to see significant push in followed by this but look, we're looking on the weekly you know that's 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 a time away but we could see this kind of just really push down throughout the course of this week wait for the close and then i could be looking for continuation to the downside and i think that's really the gameplay so once again it needs another week of materializing for me personally just with the daily candles in place the weekly close also monthly positioning for december would be phenomenal if we had that leading into next year for shorts so swiss yen definitely is one that i'm going to be keeping an eye on but not this week next so i'll just mark that as blue so i've got that in there for next um also so yeah i think yen pens are going to be an obvious one for next week um let's see monthly 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 so we haven't broken through the land in this line in the sand i was looking at we can see if we just kind of look at this little bit of price here we could essentially see this as a range play to the downside the candles are looking pretty strong here as well um we tapped into that area of liquidity we smashed through it which is nice wicked way through and then we kind of just correctively moved and now it looks like we could potentially be on the sell move let's clear that off for a second and let's just look at it on the weekly so we can see here on the weekly that we do have that element of this larger structure here which i think is making more and more sense but let's see if that move has been fulfilled and i don't think it has i think really and truly we could look at it from there even from there to there or from the break coming back to the low could be seeing it more as an expanding which i think would be more of a better play i think this could be a really good short play right now either either way even if we're coming in a little bit lower and then going to be coming back up there's still room for this trade to really play so i think we will say override low obviously there's a there's a better level down here if we do smash through it but positioning would be good where we are and then we put override one i think that's more of a value error to be honest but we'll see it as the override um oh did i put override two here uh override two and override so override just essentially meaning um price could potentially pivot from there so it's a pivotal point um, I know some people work with pivot one, two, three, or resistance, support, whatever you want to call it. Essentially, just looking at these areas for a pivotal point. So call it call it whatever you want. It doesn't really matter, um, but it's an area of major interest. So just keep that in mind. This is essentially the override over here. So you can see here when I, when I talk about overrides, 
we had a one, two, three potential, but we didn't quite get to the third touch. We actually then overrided at that high and then we sold off from there. So that then was the obvious override, which was the two touch. So something to study, food for thought there, um, but think about that for sure. Looking at this now back on the daily, um, this is still got level off relevance to it. Um, I don't think it needs the annotation, just makes things a little bit more messy. So I'll just remove that off. We can then see over here that we have that override that we are looking at. So I do want to keep a close attention to that, only mainly because a lot can happen over the course of this week here. Um, and we could still be in that corrective phase. So continuation is something that I am looking for. Um, I just don't have that commitment. So two, two things I'll be looking for. Either we smash through this and we create continuation and I can get in for the short. Completely fine with that. Right, that will be a good play. Or if we don't get that, then I will be looking to see that if we do kind of make our way, oh, if we do make our way back up into these areas and then kind of insurance entry that, there could be the potential for that. But then this just becomes, you know, and I think, I think what I would be interested in is something like that, to be honest, really and truly actually, well, given it enough thought now. Is there enough time? Yeah, next week we could. Mm, I don't really know actually if next week will be give us enough time for this. I think there's, it needs a bit of time. I think what I'm gonna be looking for is just that solid interest in insurance entry here. So just redraw that on quickly, push down. It could be any form really and truly. It doesn't have to be um, the flat flag just bear that in mind you know when i draw a flag variation in my mind i'm already thinking about the variations um of what the flag could be because i've studied them but um you know sometimes we can see how price has behaved and then sometimes price tends to repeat itself so we then see them on a smaller level but uh, looking at this sequence is corrective i'll be honest with you on the hourly looking at under four it is also corrective doesn't mean that we can't come down here so continuation in the grand scheme of things would be good a continuation above this also would be quite nice if we did get some element off that but it's just there's room for this to just develop into something a little bit larger and i think it's just it feels a little bit premature to me um if i look at it like that I do have room to manage something like this to this low and just yeah I think it's one of those ones where it takes it will take some time to really develop you know this could easily come into here push up make its way back up to this level and then we might be able to see some level of an insurance entry in here I don't know right now I'm not too sure about it I need to see some development over the course but We've kind of fulfilled that 90% rule, but we haven't um, can moved to the upside from it. So hmm, I think it definitely makes you think, you know, obvious near miss here, obvious near miss to that low, obvious near, well, we broke this one now, but then we near miss this low. We're coming to the downside for sure. But my real question now is, is there enough steam on this train? And they possibly could be, you know, they really could be. They could just be more than enough built up in this area, but I will be looking for some significance here, to be honest. I'm just looking at that. And sequentially, what do we have? We have a flag into another flag, into this being a larger flag, to then continue. It's possible right now that we could see this as a a good play. Honestly, I think intraday wise, because I'm really trying to build that better sort of intraday skill. I like it. I do like it. Let's see. Um, let's see, so we push down here and then we come, we start making our way back up. Break that, just come in a little bit 
and then we can push down take an insurance entry in here and then we could probably see if that take that low and then this becomes our overall overall structure okay i didn't really draw it on very well that's completely fine but we can see what i'm looking for there and that makes sense that builds off enough liquidity to then get the short in and then if i can take this as the cell let's have a little look over here even with a risk entry which i would like to be honest um call it a, i'll give it a bit extra to be honest call it about 17 only because we are looking like we're going to be trading into some Westpac news and also some uh, NAB. So to avoid the NAB and the Westpac, we want to uh, mitigate against that. Um, obviously, they do mean stuff, but as a trader, I don't really care much for that right now. And then to the low of this pattern, we're looking at 4, 5, and then even 7.5. And then if we're looking at the bigger move that we do commit and kind of go, it could turn into 30 odd but more than likely um you know i will be looking to see the fulfillment off of this to this side if we can get there understanding that we can pivot from here as well so even at a aggressive play of four percent so if we get here to around about 5.5 ish we can call it around about four percent locked in so i would be more than happy with a position like this um and let's just move this out a little bit oops okay so now i'm gonna move that in over there yeah so more than happy with that um we'll just have to wait and see how that materializes but i do like this a lot to be honest ea is looking quite interesting <laughs> Um, and then just conveniently just to kind of add on top of that is you know how we're at this low here and then we're just conveniently kind of hovering around this area here um, and then creating the continuation so it's just something to, to kind of keep in mind as well daily on Eurocad and then weekly oh okay so so yeah so this is this is quite good we have a near miss over here We've kind of surpassed this, we've wicked through it, and then we aggressively move to the upside. We haven't quite filled the top yet though, which invertedly, if we look at this, right, we didn't quite fill the top here. We did have a bigger near miss, but then we came all the way back and filled it. We see something here. We have a bigger gap over here. We tapped into the low that we near missed there, and we came up. Are we gonna see the same sort of play? And then we come up there. Be a very interesting one to kind of observe. So. EuroCAD, for sure, I think has massive upside potential, as well as looking at it on the weekly, we are coming from a key value area that was near missed. Wasn't completely necessary though, and I think how much we near missed it by was around about, yes, 60 odd pips. Even so, we tapped into the area of liquidity. We will, I think dominantly we can see that positioning wise, we are probably moving to the upside. But there is more than enough on the downside for this to go to the upside, but we can still break this and carry on going to the downside before we even go up. We have to understand that too, as a possible. So if we just kind of look at this, we had the near miss here, we had the near miss here, which is quite similar to this, and then this, and then we had this sort of larger near miss, and then we kind of just filled it, retraced, and then went, which I think is phenomenal when you kind of look at it from a perspective of it's happened. And then we kind of look at this one where we kind of broke this high and then kind of near missed it because we kind of came up and then rejected filled that came up near missed this one and then we kind of rejected but in terms of filling there is more than enough at the low this has already been filled so the real question now is is this just the counter move or is this playing the higher time frame picture and this was always the plan so i don't i'm not convinced on the short really and truly i'm i'm actually going to be looking for the long but what i'm trading against on the weekly is downside momentum and i don't really want to go counter trend on this but as a simple range play we could be seeing this come to the downside but more than likely fill the upside if we look at a pivotal point of, let's say here 
which off this move, how much of this move has been filled? Just that move alone. Yeah, we're seeing at the 50% move. So if we're going to pivot, this is the area that we could pivot from really and truly. Otherwise, we could be seeing this coming back down for another touch where we have one section, two, and then a third section. And then we kind of just go where we had a one, not quite a second, but then we have a third internal structure as well looks pretty interesting where you kind of have something like that which was incomplete um so yeah i mean it's just one of those ones right now where i think you just have to read through this and by reading through it i mean is this a range or is this going to be a buy and let's see what We've impulse, correction, impulse, another correction. If I look at it as a flag to pole, this could be enough to really get to the downside. Honestly, man, look at this. If I just look at it from here to here, for example, we take that, we use it from the break. It would just really push us all the way back down there. It's one of those ones that you really start twiddling your thumbs and thinking about this, but I think really and truly keep it plain and simple we haven't quite filled that there's a bit of a near miss there I'm going to wait for this to just kind of come into here and then if we do get a push up and a significant sort of flag I won't hesitate on that for the buy even just back into this area to then see this as a larger range cool but more than likely it's going to look like something like this where comes in kind of just takes out some people there'll probably be some smaller flags on the way here but then it's when we get to this area here and then we can create something clear when do we usually see stuff like that not really you know especially not on on eurocad it's not been very common it's been more so a little bit like that so could take a little bit more time than I anticipate and be a little bit more corrective but my understanding is there and I'll be looking for something more so in that sense to then see if I can take that to the upside wow that feels so counter honestly and then looking at that in a pattern in itself this could then form into so much you know I don't know, really. I'm going to come back and really analyze this one a little bit more because I think it's going to need a little bit more time than just a simple insurance entry to the upside. There is massive downside potential. And what I am really thinking is because we haven't quite tapped into that, this then comes up, comes up in a state of a one, two, three, let's say over here. And then we get that insurance entry and we sell back into this low. We break it and continue. So it's a very neutral one, and I think that's what's bothering me. Um, there's just so so much potential for a trade like this. That would be the better play. Looking at it in sequence, it's just don't. I wouldn't let that near miss put me off actually. And I think I'm just going to play. We've broken through that, and now we're trading down here. Can we get something intentional to then move lower? Plain and simple. If we get it, we get it. If we start moving higher from here, then that's when the low risk setup comes in play. And then we go in here, we take a continuation, and then we understand that this is not the play and this is the play. And then we can take that to the upside. Cool. I'm happy with this as the forecast, really and truly. Um, will that shape up next week is the real question. Yeah. We'll wait and see, we'll wait and see. But like I said, it needs a bit more time to just analyze. But I think once I finished analyzing that properly, um, I'll be able to, yeah, re re really, really, really be able to, to move forward from it. So took a bit of time with that one, to be honest. Euro Swiss, um, not going to touch Euro Swiss as well. I don't, I don't think I'm fully interested in it just yet. Even though we are at that very, very cool area of the absolute low, nothing significant has really happened yet we're still sort of messing about there and 
the weekly actually looks pretty interesting um very indecisive daily had a strong impulse it looks like there's a correction and we might continue yeah i'm just not interested in this just yet it looks good though it looks like you had a push up first flag um entry in there i think you're most likely to be taken back out personally it's it's a good positioning for sure i just think that was very risky for sure number one probably take 15 um you'd be running pretty decent but i think i wouldn't be surprised if this did come back down so i'm just going to leave that um let's have a little look at this okay yeah so this is one that i was looking at and yeah so yeah I'm, I'm really happy with this so i'm gonna take that off that was pretty much the line in the sand for me we smashed through it and now we're just kind of continuing i don't think this is enough for this to continue to do the downside just yet really and truly um i kind of really did think about it and all of that i think there's a lot of momentum being built here which is making sense so the longer this goes on the more higher probable this is to continue but right now what i'm actually seeing is massive impulse from here which makes sense you know taking out all of this which we were accumulating since 2023 august all the way up until november 21 and then we just smashed back down so over a course of literally november the 20th to december the 4th which was call it around about 15 days we literally just smashed to the downside of call it around about 200 odd pips so not bad at all for for a short play move there um continuation though it does definitely looks interesting so kind of just getting into it on the on the four quickly what we can see over here is and just highlighted in these blue boxes and i hope that's very clear for you to see is we had a low we kind of created a high and then we pushed back down we didn't feel the low we kind of near missed it and then you go back in to the high we near missed it we tried to retest it we had a near miss to the near miss and then we came back up we near missed that high and then we had another candle which was a near miss to that high I'll go to the one actually a bit more clear and then we actually tapped into it which is which is which is interesting but because i looked at it on the four i could see that this was so bullish and it was like just a massive bullish wick on it i wasn't then convinced that the four hour was really telling me that we're ready to go short so i wouldn't be surprised if we actually came in this one more time and then the interesting thing i then observed was what if we have something like that right or don't even have to use that one you could use this one but let's say you have something like this now and then this becomes your one two three right where then we kind of come back up we create something here oh sorry we'll push back up um maybe 15 will paint it a little bit easier um so yeah we've, we've already tapped into this then let's say we push up we create a correction over here and then we push up we feel this and then we go um I like that a lot really and truly i really do because of the multiple near misses and how everything kind of came together a one two three in this area would make a lot of sense we have section one section two section one six one two one two and then we have third touch up here um insurance entry i think would make me feel a little bit more comfortable only because i think if i was to go off and take a risk entry I could just it could just spike up a little bit higher than i anticipate so how would i look to take that is literally wait for the push up when the push up comes let it push back down and then when the flag forms over here i can then take advantage of it five minutes flag higher up in structure yeah i wouldn't i wouldn't mind actually to be honest it would make sense but the 15 is more preferred yeah so 15 um i think the reduced risk entry actually kind of just looking at it um i would probably just take the 15 um take the 15 minute flag take the 10 minute um stop and just take the reduced risk on it makes no difference to be honest but i will probably set it as a pen in order even if it was a little bit later i think i could still get the protection in there would i squeeze in a little bit less i could but i don't think i will um euro japanese yen I think euro yen um for sure similar to the other yen pairs we covered 
like I said, there's still upside momentum there. There's this value area too that we could be moving towards, I think more so looking for that sort of development off this correction. I will be looking for something which kind of just develops a little bit further and then kind of just take something which makes more sense, insurance entry probably, um, or insurance entry down there, and then probably just look for the entry to the downside. But like I said, right now I'm not too bothered. I think I'll give it another week to materialize. You know, once we've got some solid commitment, even if yen pairs have really committed and we're still tra we're trading somewhere around about here, it can then be something to evaluate again. But like I said, there's massive potential for, for pairs. I just think I would much rather be positioning myself once we've tapped into the high value area, but it could be some time before we get there. But just because of how that momentum is moving, it makes more sense for a correction to be forming over the course of this week to then be seeing something late week to be moving. We can already see the start of it, but I think this is just way too premature. I think really and truly we could even see this come up, come in like this and then be seeing something a little bit larger, more more depth. And then we see that sort of completion of then this becomes the first leg and then that becomes the second leg, breaking the low to then move higher. So I think really and truly, this needs time to develop in, in, in my honest opinion. And I think next week it will be ready. So I'll give that more time to develop and then we'll come back to EJ next week. Euro New Zealand now just very similar to how I was looking at Aussie New Zealand I think it's just one that I think has massive downside potential really and truly you know we've tapped into that hook point that the area of liquidity has been tapped into we pushed away we did retrace more than 50 percent it got a bit more confusing but then we got solid commitment look at that on the weekly I haven't seen candles looking so good and I think the fact of the matter is the fact that we stalled is even better the fact that we didn't just fully retrace all the way back up and we can see that the momentum is being built right now. Could this turn into something a little bit larger? Absolutely. You know, just to kind of play with that momentum side. But this would be enough in here. This sort of range play in here within here, this is more than enough. Even if we were to take this a little bit lower and we looked at it from here, cool. But I think really and truly, I would give this a little bit more time to develop. I wouldn't be jumping into anything so soon. I would let that kind of make its way back up near miss that high and then have something a little bit more clear, you know, and then you see it. And then when you see it, you can't unsee it because then it just makes sense. And I think when you get a simple one, two, three play like that, that's going to be on point. Um, that could shape up next week though, really and truly. I think you know, give this time, let it come up, let it do its near miss, whatever it's got to do, it's nonsense over the course of Tuesday, Wednesday, and then boom, we get some momentum kick in and then we get that insurance entry. That's what I'll be looking for. I'm, I'm still on the four though, so I need to kind of refine that a little bit more, but we can see here, it, it just, everything kind of lines up, even with the piggybacking off the back of sort of news and things like that, you know, it's, it's all there. So I wouldn't just, it's a bit premature as well to just be forecasting this um, for what it is right now. But like I said, just keeping it very simple, taking something like that, looking for this internal structure where we get a strong push up and then we kind of correctively sort of don't kind of get that full rejection we're looking for. And then we come back in for one more and then we get that cell. Uh, well, I think, I think the cell will be a lot smaller than that. Um, something more so like this, clearer on the 15, maybe visible on the one, more so on the 15, equal spacing, you know, all of that have it in play. Uh, one hour flag could come a little bit later around about there. I think I'll be good with this really and truly. Maybe this would be a little bit more um, smaller. It doesn't have to be so large, of course, but really and truly like this is the sort of entry that I'm, I would be more than happy to be positioning myself on because I think there's more potential for a sell like this than kind of just taking one at the value error. Give it some time, let it materialize internal structures and whatnot is there. Could you take a risk entry? I probably would still wait for the insurance. It's just, just the way I think it would mitigate against risk. You know, here it could get messy, it could just turn into something a little bit more. The, the insurance entry would definitely take that away and I think I like that a lot. So insurance entry, could I squeeze in? I probably could actually go risk in here and I would say even 25 really 25 or oh, even if i got that 
the nice little entry in there. You could probably get away with 20. 20 at its tightest, I think, for me. You could go 15, but 20. 20 for me, I think, is all good. And then trading it into, let's say, first inflection point, about 3%. And then you're coming into around about 7. Wow, this could be... This could be stunning, honestly, underrated, absolutely underrated, this trade. Understanding that we are coming from a point of interest, this inflection point, we have kind of broken through it. You, you know, you could see this as a descending channel, but catching people out on the wrong side right now. We're playing the big momentum. We're playing the bigger move. We're looking at the weekly. We can see on the weekly that we do have that sort of massive momentum sort of sell-off where we have that sell, that big sell. Look at how big and full-bodied those candles are. I think that's a point to very take 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 note of that sort of price action where you see these huge momentum candles like how often do you see this not commit you know you see huge momentum candle okay yeah there was a big pullback there but it committed you know commitment market's telling you when the commitment's coming in play vice versa if i invert the charts and we look at it on the other way big full candles commitment you know, big full candles, commitment, big full candle, you know, you, you get to see them time and time again. It's basically just telling you what's happening in the market. Take a message from the market sometimes and the market will look after you. So position yourself well. Of course, yeah, you can get taken out of positions, but I think when the market gives you clear messages like that, you can take full advantage. The next thing that I'll be like looking at is obviously Euro USD. Obviously how we know, I'm just going to go back to the DXY quickly. We can see that we are kind of hovering around this value area there is room for it to kind of go higher but more than likely we are trending in the dominant direction of the downside right now we don't have significant structure just yet but we are building so we're looking for significant structure on the euro usd invert this because we were looking quite similar on the dxy and in terms of a retracement perspective we are kind of hovering around that 50 percent region we've actually broken just through it so uh, this is the pivotal point for me, really and truly. We need to really see this kind of continue. Let's have a little look at that. So we did have that strong push up, but now we're kind of coming back down into that 50% region. It's more than enough. We were looking for further continuation there. Right now, we're just going to have to really play with what we have. And if we look at it on the daily... We have left a little bit of a reference point here for ourselves, which is nice as always. And we just have to wait and see how price develops. I am interested to see conveniently that low lines up with this high. Do we get some sort of structure in here? I think one will paint that a little bit better. And if we can come in for another low and then kind of come up near miss, come in again and then do that. And then we get something internally that would be interesting for a short play to go lower and yeah i would be looking for something like that so let's just line that up quickly where we do get something in that sense and then we can just draw it on top so we get a push up we come back down come back up okay nice little middle section if possible and then we come back up for that final one. And then we get a nice little sell. Probably look for the insurance entry as well again. Only because of the positioning of the risk entry. The risk entry could be on. I just don't... I don't, I'm not too convinced with it. I think there could be larger elements of risk. Am I looking for too much though? That's the question. Yeah, I'm going to, like I said, this this is a rough forecast. I mean, this one could easily turn into so much more. I'm going to probably re-forecast EURUSD. So um, it's just one that I think definitely has massive potential. Look at that. So that's a Monday, Tuesday, and then by Tuesday evening, maybe even Wednesday. So we'll be looking at Wednesday London session. If we're looking at a structure in this sense, yeah, this 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 could be good. This could be really good, to be honest. Um, this would be continuation to the downside, meaning the DXY would be going to the upside. Hmm. Yeah. So keeping it quite neutral and then playing the massive move there. If we are going to be referring to the upside, then we have to see 
how do we look to play that? Yeah, I think I think it would be very clear at that point there where I would then look for strong push up continuation. And then that so that would be a full momentum play now push straight back up and then correction and then we're playing the ICI move. And I think that that would literally be the only thing that I could really see as it or if this turns into a running channel still I wouldn't take the entry on the running channel. However, I would then understand that, but the short looks much better, <laughs> truly. The short looks so much better, and I will I will take that into consideration when taking a position, but I think more than likely um, we'll have to wait and see how this develops. I think that has massive potential. I think that looks pretty, pretty good. Um, like I said, so far, we haven't really been able to pick up too much. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven pairs so far across the board. Um, yeah, we, we, we're doing okay so far. We have only around a few more pairs. So I think for next week, we're already looking at some pretty good instruments on the Forex pairs. Obviously, we haven't gone into the commodities where we have pairs like the DAX and gold and then oil and so forth. So let's have a little look at GA. Ah. GA, GA, GA. Honestly, still in that little corrective squeeze, man. This is gonna this is gonna really move when it's ready, honestly. But right now we have that impulse correction, and then I think we're just gonna get another move. I am looking for this sort of move here where we have that we come up back into that high if it's possible, and then we break that and continue to the downside. The short play is definitely what I'm gonna be keeping an eye on, but the longer this moves, the more it improves. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm just going to keep it as a simple range play. And we wait, you know, because let's have a little look at this range. We had that, we broke it, we came up again, so that created the new high. And then if we point out the near misses, that one pretty much near missed all of that, which is completely fine. But then we took that out and then we near missed that. So that's another more relevant near miss. And then again, we did the same thing again, where we just near missed it here. We tapped in and then we near missed that. So then this becomes the near miss to this near miss, right? Same with the low. We have a near miss here and then this one's kind of coming there. Wouldn't be surprised this comes to the downside, near misses and then comes to the upside, takes out the high and then sells off. We'll see. I'm not ready yet. Until we get to this area here, I'm not going to be fully convinced with a short. Set a simple, simple, easy task. Set a alert. When price gets there, we react to it. But if we look at it on an internal level, was there more than enough for this to go? So we had this sort of section here. Had a kind of a head and shoulders in there as well. We pushed away, retested the head and shoulders, sold off. And then intraday wise, this then comes in here and comes back up. You can take a trade in there to get to the downside. Understanding that this can still get quite messy and impulsive, comes back into this area and just shoots up. So there is a trade in EA for sure. In terms of a risk reward, oh shit, that could be that could be a pretty good trade to be honest. Even with a 17 pip stop loss to the low five, and then you could be calling it a seven. Yeah, there could be an interesting trade on GA. I think that's one that I'm going to be keeping an eye on again, but more so interested up here. You know, if we get a trade in there, and then we trade, take that for the long run, that's the much better trade. And then, yeah, so it's just situational. But this one can be the one to go. Don't get me wrong, that could be the trade, which just accumulates enough volume and then just pushes, taps into this, and then it just keeps on going like, these are the things. It's just next week we do have a lot of news coming out, especially for these Aussie pairs. And yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we get the nice entry with the sell and the momentum kicks in at the same time. It's just this is I'm going to be sleeping during this news and I'll, I'll not be comfortable being at an entry point, which kind of shapes up over here. And then news kicks in and just volatility hits and then I wake up in the slippage. So I'm not going to tell you that. Um, Let's have a little look on GC, GC, GC. Um, yeah, GC needs a bit of time, man. Yeah, it's not, I mean, look, 
Yeah, we're just we're just so close. Honestly, we're so close. We have that tie. We've near missed it here. We near missed it again. You know, it's just we're, we're creeping. We're creeping there. But I think even when we get there, it's going to be some time. It's just that sell off looks so good, you know, and it convinces you that this is a good area. But more than likely, this is developing, man. This is just doing some crazy stuff right now. I just don't want to touch that. Get tagged in, tagged out situation. GC, similar to the other ones, just not going to touch that. I think GC, out of all of the Swiss pairs, though, I think actually looks pretty good. Um, you know, you kind of have this sort of corrective squeeze where you can kind of take so many trades in there. You kind of just look at this and you're like, hmm, it's a bit messy. But when you look at it, there is some clear... It kind of commits to it. It's just when you get into these sort of zones, which really and truly it feels like we're in again, it, it's just, yeah, it's one of those ones where I don't want to sit through that, man, accumulating swaps and all of these. It's not really my sort of price action. Um, understanding that, you know, it's choppy, it moves up and down. It's tradable, but just very messy. Yeah, not not worth putting it on watch to me compared to the other stuff. Like if we were in such a corrective market condition where almost every pair was doing it, then I would say probably GBP Swiss would have an update for you to take an advantage on it and the Swiss pairs. But like I said, the man, I, I wouldn't want to trade those market conditions personally right now. It's not, it's not the sort of market conditions we strive for. Like these are the market conditions, impulse push, strong push, another correction comes up later, you know, I mean, days away, of course, but if you can build the patience and the, the mindset to be patient for that, it's good. Um, we can see here, so we have tapped into the hook point here and we did get a nice rejection, another yen pair. We didn't actually tap into it. We near missed it, which sucks because just like a few of other yen pairs, we were looking for that sort of insurance entry there. Well, that's scrapped. And yeah, I mean, look, nothing to say that we, we still won't come up. I would say that this is your one, two. Internal. To be honest, man, like this is messy. This is so messy. This looks good in the sense that they actually, you know what, compared to the yen pairs, GJ looks so much better than some of the other yen pairs I saw. And I think if there is one that I would choose right now, I think GJ would be it. Only because there's a little bit more clarity. But the fact is we didn't break this, which sucks. Um, yeah, look, clear. If we look at this again, that is the low. We near missed the low. And then once again, we near missed that low. It makes sense for these yen pairs to go short. Then I look at it on the four. We're in a bit of accumulation here. Structurally, kind of looks a bit better. I think uh, I wouldn't take that. I would wait. I don't know. I just I think it's way underdeveloped, man. I think let that kind of come up, and then oh, let that come up a bit, and then drop off, and then you're like, oh, okay, and then you're like, hmm. Or even if you, you use something like that and you had this and yeah, it's just too many. It's so subjective at this point. I think I need a sharp push up somewhere. And then something like that would make sense. I mean, obviously clean up the structures a little bit, but you know, then we have something like that where we can actually work with and we can say, okay, that's our impulse. We take that, we move that over here then it makes sense how we clear this low and then we look for continuation to continue. Things like that make so much more sense, you know. Forget all this internal sort of bullshit right now and just look at it for what it is. And it's like, does that seem like enough to make the next move? Not really right now. I think just needs a little bit more development. And then when we do get it, even if, even if it was a bit more sharp and then we had moves like this, we could then still make sense of something like that and then take that to the downside. So like I said, it needs time to develop next week. Honestly, it's going to paint a good picture, but the weekly, yeah, stunning. 
honestly, how we just moved away from that. We've just cleared all of this. It's, it's good. It's good. I just wish we kind of smashed through that, but it's all good. I think the nice thing about it is we didn't kind of wick to it. We kind of just full bodied, kind of just got there and then moved away full bodied as well. You know, there's nothing, there's nothing ugly about it besides the fact we didn't break it. Um, so it is what it is. GBP New Zealand. Yeah, GBP New Zealand was one I was like kind of just looking at the future, but this that was a case of just looking too far ahead. It's just we're way too we're not there yet. Um, but where we are at the moment is near miss and near miss to both those highs. So looking at it now, I'm looking at how can I get long on this to fill that. But the truth is. I don't know, like, are we going to create this and then come back down for one more and then go and then give it enough steam? Because then I could be looking at a play from here to here, take that, put it on there. And that makes sense, right? Where well, then you see this as the, the steam enough to break through that high then breaks all of this takes out either to create continuation and moves to the upside, or we just impulsively push back in. So I think, it needs a bit more time for me personally, because even if this kind of pushed through and then created some continuation here and continued, then I would understand that as well. To just say, well, you know, price just didn't have enough and it's just in that corrective sort of squeeze. And then we're still looking at something like this before we kind of go. Fair enough. So, I am still looking for the buy. It's just GN isn't the best one for the buy right now. And I think I just give that more time to develop. The best way I would probably take this if I was going to put GN on watch is insurance entry, honestly, because of how, you know, this is moving here. Let it kind of just push low, push back up with strong momentum, creates a nice, decent flag and then goes. But then if you look at this, this would then all have to happen for a week and maybe even two weeks and then come up here. Because if you look at it on the daily as well, a lot can change over a course of a daily candle, but we still need to back that up. And yeah, it would have to be a strong push, strong push again. Of course, for two days, I'm just asking for way too much at that point, especially with the way price action is. I don't think it's going to do it. So let it do its thing. GBP US dollar. Hmm. Let's just go back, have a quick look at the DXY. Yep. Okay. So we have that sort of value error, potential sell. And then we look at G, G, U. Yeah. So I think this needs to be cleaned off now. And that go back to the daily. Not cheap. Let me look at the weekly. So yeah, weekly candles are looking pretty good to the upside, to be honest. We didn't really find a solid base that we came from and the retrace was awfully much larger than the 50. If we look at this here, just broke above the 50 and pushed back down as well. It's a case where we kind of just have to really read between the lines here. Are we going to go short? We're we going to go long right now. It's not looking like the most best sequence to the downside. We didn't come from anywhere significant. I think the buy is still on, truly. And that's an interesting one because if we're still looking at the buy, then we're looking at the short. So then we're looking at this for over the course of the next, call it about three, four days. And then we look at GU, three, four days, where would it be? In three, four days, GU would potentially be down in these regions here. Interesting. So we just pulled it up on the four. Yeah, I'll give that time to develop. Honestly, I wouldn't I wouldn't get too married to this, but this would be an insurance one for me. I can't put that on watch next week. Honestly, that's not it's not one that I'm gonna be married to for sure. So definitely not a GBP sterling week for me. Um we have one last look actually. Yeah, no, no, no. 
needs it needs a bit more. It needs a lot more for me, honestly. Nothing there for me. Uh, New Zealand CAD. I like it. Push up. Let's see the weekly. Ah, oh, nice. Very nice. It has been in that sort of corrective squeeze for some time, but you know, there was time and time again we were waiting for this, and now that we kind of have it, we need to now see if we can actually utilize it. So we've pushed out of this, which is nice. We've broken it corrective, but on the weekly, still looks pretty decent. Let's have a little look. So we are moving up in a sequence as well. I'm going to invert this for simplicity for me. Came in from here, not a key value area. Seems interesting. Oh, no way. You know, when you when you look at it sometimes inverted, it just really pump, pops out to you. Um, so let's get these on quickly. We can see here that we had this sort of section over here. Could probably go into the one actually. I think the one is going to give me a lot more clarity on this. Um, this is this is reminding me, giving me so much nostalgia towards the EU run. I don't know if you guys studied the EU run, but if you haven't, um, definitely worth it because uh, it's just good to see that. It's just very good. So we kind of took out that, and then we create the one, two, three. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. Honestly, this is uh, this is something else. Just using the arrow tool to kind of point it out quickly, but um, I love this honestly. Like I don't know if you guys just love drawing these on sometimes, but structures. Um, and then yeah, you can just analyze and see where the price went and everything. It's good. It's looking really good. And then you had this section over here, which honestly wasn't the best. When I wouldn't have taken that. Um, however, if we do look at what we have now and it's here. I think we literally are at structure. Um, wow. Okay. So this is nice. Market closed in a very convenient place. Sequence wise. Yep. Near inflection point over here. C4. Wow. Fuck, you know, I like that. I like it a lot. Okay, cool. Um, is it likely we're going to come into those lows? I don't think so. Really and truly. Oh my God. I'm actually well happy that I've come across this one. What is this? New Zealand CAD. Fucking hell. Came in with the goods. Love it. Absolutely love it. Now that's impulsive. How's it looking on the four? Oh, that's the only off-putting thing, isn't it? But doesn't necessarily have to be the one that stops this from being a good trade. I'm going to wait. I'm really going to wait on this one. And essentially what I'm going to look for is pushes up, continuation up here. And I'll go. I'll be happy with that. Strong impulse. Needs to smash through all of this bullshit down here. Take away. The reason for that is I want to take away these variations of what could happen. You know, I want to eliminate all of that. Because then if I take that away, then the odds are that we would get something like that and it will drop before it even gives me an entry. And then we, we continue to the downside like that. But, but I'm happy with this. I'm very happy with this. I could, in fact, just box that off of a ray line. Yeah, I'll just use a ray line. Doesn't matter. Like, simple, easy straightforward that's how i want to keep it and i'm going to look for that insurance entry if i get that that's me I'm, I'm going to be well happy with that entry and given how this pair kind of is it's not going to be a bad entry it's going to be pretty good because continuation wise fucking hell it could just fly though that's the bullshit thing um and i know it so yeah not not too concerned about it flying to be honest now actually you know it's, it is bullshit but it is what it is so Anyway, New Zealand CAD, definitely one to be thinking about because it has massive upside potential despite that strong push down. We've seen it time and time before. You know, um, we have that sort of corrective behavior. 
we have a strong push down but the, the only difference with this one is this strong push down did break that low so it's one thing that i will just be keeping in mind not taking away the fact that we could get a one two three into this as well so if we do kind of tap into this kind of near miss that then near miss that again and then kind of come in there then i could consider a short as well just putting it out there you know i wouldn't just stick on the the buy i would then understand that there is a potential for the short but that would 110 percent be an insurance entry once again for me as well we are taking a trade at the low but then again in the grand scheme of things we could see this as um a potential larger flag into maybe something around about here so i'm not too convinced with the with the short as much as uh the buy but like i said it's there um something just to be evaluating and understand looking at new zealand swiss now let's quickly go back to the weekly on that yeah it's still in that squeezing sort of momentum right now i don't think there's anything with major significance that really jumps out to me zooming out on that yeah we're just kind of correctively coming into all of this definitely i'm not going to be looking for anything just yet on this um you know it's just one of those areas where this can just go up and you get caught into something thinking that's going to go short and it doesn't so like i said don't get caught into these crappy positions i mean yeah okay there's potential man like there's a trade here and if you did refine it i get it you know there, 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 there was definitely a trade here because we were trading into the low this would make sense you know you take a trade in there um and then let's just say you, you got the whatever entry in there and you're able to take it you know you, you could easily just say you know to the low here we were taking around about five percent so that makes sense and you could have kept your um stop loss around about call it around about three percent and then as it just kind of continued you kind of stayed a little bit more humble and then it was around about seven percent there locked in with the potential way around about 10 so then you could have then been a little bit more aggressive or you could have just said 7% happy with that, leave 3% on the table for this to develop, et cetera, et cetera, whatever. So there's room for that. But now that we've actually broken the low, I wouldn't waste my time really and truly. We just don't know. We, we really, really don't know at this point if this is the actual low or if this is just developing into something, you know, and then we, we, we come in over here and then we do this and then it just gets messy. Like you don't, I don't want to personally get involved in something like that right now. Could you look for the buy? Well, vice versa, you know, it's like how we broken before is like we just really, really push in. I would say that the only time you want to really look for a buy is if we do get a strong push back down, we continue with something like that, and then you get something in there. That's 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 not a bad buy then at that point there. You could either take it into that low. So that's the way I'll be looking at that. Not worried about New Zealand Swiss. Much better pairs as we've seen today. Okay, New Zealand Yen. Once again, we... we definitely can see potential here we have a value area over here we have a near miss to that and then we have another obvious near miss here because we are selling off at this point here it's going to be coming up at some point for sure however we can move away significantly before we feel that that's the only other thing we look at it on the daily we can see that we did have some pretty good momentum come in and we did sell off here but we shouldn't be fully convinced yet on the sell because we haven't quite broken out of this. If by next week we've pushed out and we start continuing down here, it's a no brainer. You want to be getting involved on that. But like I said, this is a week after play where I could be then looking to position myself on a nice um, continuation pattern to go lower from here. And that would make sense. And then I could probably play this structure as a whole. But more than likely, I think this is going to get complicated, start pushing up again and make its way to these highs. So for that reason, I'm just going to stay out of New Zealand pairs, yen pairs. I just truly think one more week would do it so much more justice, especially for the weekly. New Zealand US dollar. I like this a lot, to be honest. So look, we have obvious near miss, let's say near miss there, then we near missed again, and then we near missed. And we did break this in a, in a formation of a one, two, three, which is nice. And then we kind of just started selling off from there. But more interesting, and I'll just remove these on, is we kind of came up again, and then we came up into this region here, where we did a similar sort of thing, near miss, near miss, or we kind of filled it there, and then we broke above and then sold off, which is nice. But now the real question I have here is, what's the gameplay? What is the gameplay for New Zealand US dollar? Where are we going? This was the point of purchase, so, we didn't really come to anything majorly significant, but we just started buying. 
and then we started pushing away and i think that comes in with the dxy taking control and overriding everything that we were seeing so more importantly right now is are we in a continuation phase to move higher right because if we go back to the daily quickly we can see strong momentum to the upside followed by the weekly strong very strong momentum makes sense for a pullback it makes sense for uh, accumulation now and we can see that on the daily we are accumulating volume and we just need to convince people we're on the wrong side of the market so i'm not going to shift my bias completely at this point and i'm just going to understand keeping it very very simple is we have this as a ray line and this is the override i mean the high right so we don't need to even name that as the override because it's it's not as relevant but more so this could be an expanding to just continue higher and that's what it feels more and more like if i can get the magnet on top of here yep and then over here i would take more so this one and just look at it for what it is look at it on the one you can see that really does just kind of jump out on you and yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised, man. Like we're coming into that area. Look at the DXY as well. If the DXY taps into this area here and then sells, what we're going to see here with NU is the same thing. We're going to see this then just kind of sell off, not even tap into anything significant, but push back up, give us a clear flag, and then just go. While the DXY is just dropping off, this is going to be going. And then you zoom out to the four and you say, oh, that kind of makes sense. Yeah, because... You know how you see here is that was just corrective and then you could say well you know i could have even done this that this you know you're gonna you start making up shit. so truth is you got your line in the sand gonna look for it to just do whatever it has to do with the dxy push up give me a clear continuation pattern and then go long what time frame we're going to be looking for a one hour flag to be honest um so strong push down over here push back up and yeah that could easily come into london session possibly new york session probably not going to be looking for an asian session trade for sure but something like that i'm more than happy with that man as long as we get that strong impulse on the four giving me that one hour correction over here uh mate i'm all over that i think more than likely though it might be something a little bit more tighter and we might not see a larger flag so soon but Nevertheless, that paints a very good picture for what I am looking for, and I will keep it plain and simple, keeping it just like that. Clear, impulsive push out, catching people out on the wrong side. You can even look at it as this is your sort of ending structure in here as well, where you kind of have something like that. However you want to take it, you know, you have that as your expanding, working as continuation or reversal at this ending point. And then we just let it do its thing. I think more so I'd probably just look at it kind of internally like that and just say, look, it's, it's not the cleanest, but it makes sense. You can make sense out of this, which is the most important thing. And I think just at this point here, we'll just have to wait and see. If this does kind of just continue and goes a bit deeper than expected, then it could, yeah, I mean, there's so much that lines up for this to really be the play. I'm going to let it just play. Would I take a 15 minute flag with a one hour flag is? Yes. If the one hour is in and solid. No, I don't think so. I think maybe this one could be a bit smaller though, for sure. Um, I always think about this after I've drawn it, but more so. Yeah. Happy with that. Um, the four hour has to be in for me though the four hour would have to be closed and by the time this flag would formed yeah absolutely it gives me enough time so you know we pushed in strong momentum push back kind of confusing people in a sense and then we kind of go to the one and we see it forming is there more risk to this yeah of course this this still would be higher risk for me because this can then just be you know turning into this and then it kind of just continues with this sort of corrective squeeze and i get caught into some bullshit I understand that but that's a risk i'll be willing to take in my opinion so that's one that i'm going to be looking at for sure um further up would probably eliminate risk more um but yeah like i said we'll have to wait and see about how this formulates let it do its thing let it do its thing i want to see a solid push back up continuation and see that as the first move and then yeah can we go and usd cad 
let's see USD CAD is looking nice as well um, I'll go to the weekly on USD CAD so what we have over here is quite similar as well we have that near miss over here we kind of took out that high and then we still near miss but then we correctively pushed away which once again doesn't really scream to me big sell but the problem is I am seeing this as a sort of one, two, three into that liquidity area where there was more than enough. We kind of retraced and then kind of just sold off, taking out people. This still looks like a very good move to the downside. Um, I just don't really know if the play is going to be a simple, easy play to here to then kind of come back up and then creating this sort of messier section. But at the same time, there's variations of things that I'm looking at now because what I would like to know is, are we then now going to see something that comes back up and then does something like that? And then internally, we can then find something like this. And then we see we took out the high and then we sell. That would still make sense. But then I look at the higher time frame structure and I'm thinking, it's a hell of a lot of a mess for, for a short play, but let's just wait and see so I want to just let this kind of go um, I don't think you see is positioned in the best place possible for me right now I think price action's also been quite messy sequence has been very much off there's trades in there yes but not that not the cleanest and the easiest for me to understand and take advantage of I don't I would I would be very interested to see what my mentors think about this but more so I would look at sort of this as your price point because it conveniently lines up with there and then I'll go to the 15 just for just a little bit of refinement maybe even the ones actually enough I'd like to see this drop off a little bit and then kind of come back up and then maybe see something like that internally and then we can see a probably short in there for an insurance entry to then take it back into the low but then looking at that as well that would shape up by another week or so so i'm not going to waste my time worrying about that too much insurance entry push up push right down maybe not really interested in that either usd swiss i think that kind of goes self-explanatory um this one a little bit more interesting actually for the sell i think this is the only swiss pair that kind of says we're good because if the DXY is shaped up and the DXY is good, we're going to move with it. Real question is, let's see the daily. Daily looks all right. We're clearly moving back down to this low. We don't have to, if I invert this quickly. Yeah, I mean, continuation to the upside, continuation down here. Yep. So we look at that on the four. Is there any daily price points that really jump out to me? Maybe here-ish. Maybe we'll come all the way back up. Who knows? Feel all of that corrective price. Um, unlikely. I don't think. I don't think I'm happy with this to be honest. I mean, I would. I would look for sort of. That, if you can see it. Um, where then we get something very subjective, which once again I wouldn't like. I wouldn't like this as well. It's too subjective on the on that case. Does this then become if we had this, I guess more so would be interested in this. I think that's the only one that kind of says good entry. And then You'd have to wait for that insurance entry as well, which still be worth it for sure. And then to the low, you're probably taking around about five and then all the way down here, about 10. Needs time to develop. And then once again, that's probably next week. So yeah, not not really good. A lot of trade shaping up for the week after this though. So um, definitely something very, very good coming out of this, uh, this video is um, don't over trade this week because the week after could be phenomenal. Be careful. Be careful. Let's see. So now we're looking at this corrective squeeze into this high. Yeah, we're still in that momentum to the downside. But the one thing about UJ is that we've actually cleared that value area. But we tapped we didn't even tap into that to be fair. I think I think UJ is my favorite yen pair um, out of all of them at the moment. Yeah. 
man. Honestly, if we get that, oh man, I'll be good. I think out of the Yenpers, I might even keep UJ on watch. Just just as that wild that, that wild card that could just shape up with the momentum and everything coming in play. Who knows? Look, that, that even has time, man. That has way more than enough time to develop and just play. Shit, that's sick. That's really good. And then USD Zar. USD Zar. I think I'm only going to do a Forex one today because this video has gone on for some time and I think there was a lot of value in what I did. Maybe I'll quickly br brush through the, the commodities and indices. Um, but yeah, USD Zar, I'm not going to touch that, to be honest. Not my pair, but one, two, three there. Looks good. Okay, let's jump into the indices and brush through these. So Aussie 200 starting off with that one. Aussie 200 weekly looks strong for the upside move. Yeah, looking really good for that upside move. Going into the four. Oh man, there's potential. But if that kind of just sells, comes back into this area, comes back up, comes back down, goes. Not 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 your typical sort of structure there though, for sure. But if that came up, wouldn't hesitate on that for sure. US 100. Yeah, upside as well. These are all looking like they're going to upside. This is corrective though, man. It's just, yeah. I mean, similar situation, you know, that near miss, near miss, near miss. This is going to come down at some point, but I don't. I don't really love it, so I'm not going to worry. Okay. US 100 was one I was kind of briefly having a look at here and there. Just jumping on the four quickly. Um, we can then see like this behavior that we see time and time again where corrective kind of just comes back in, takes everything out, and then goes. And then if you see it over here, corrective pushes down, takes everything out, and then goes. But in this sense, we haven't really given it that best sort of push away we're kind of in this phase here so i have more room to believe that this may not even reach that high just yet and it might come in for one more and then just kind of go and then we get something a little bit more like that so still whole fire on it just just trying to see that one through us 30 looks good but it's a bit obvious and i think um i think i think actually this is too small when you really think about it. It can go, but it's, it just doesn't seem like it's enough. Like for that impulse, correction, continuation, let's just look at that. Yeah, we're basically looking at something the same size as this. I think, I think really and truly it's a false one. It will probably push, come back down, get a bit larger. And then just go and i think that that would be better really and truly that would make sense to then give it the momentum it needs but probably it doesn't have to be that large this can still go it can tap in get corrective on the way up it is what it is us 500 is so close to this value area as well i wouldn't even want to be looking for a short just yet i would just wait now to see how that reacts to that value area but more than likely it looks like we could be going long ball the DAX, bit of a bitch for me. Um, yeah, literally got burnt on this one, but it is okay. Um, if you look at it closer, we can see here that we had the high value area here that we've taken out, but we're still in that impulsive move. I think really and truly, the smartest thing to do is just wait for it to come back in. And then when it does give you that sort of continuation, whatever patterns down here, you can then take advantage of it. And I think that is honestly the much better move than just trying to get involved in any old crap up here. Because if you zoom in over here, there was this possibility where we kind of broke above and then you can see on the hourly, we had this, which I'll just kind of formulate here. And then you go to the 15 and I was looking at this over here for a trade um so i took it over there you could have even said 14 yeah and then go to the one and just have a little look at that on it when it closed and you can see over here you know positioning as well looked okay then waiting for the next hourly candle to close that looked okay and then it pushed away and then when you see it 
you would have had about 1% there. So really and truly, you could have locked in break even, taken a break even on that and walked away. But a bit, uh, bit stupid of me, left it and uh, took losses. So it is what it is. Um, and then, yeah, looking at the rest of them, I don't really trade a lot of these. But let's see the um, NL25 as well. Yeah, that's strong bullish as well. Indices are going strong bullish and finalized with the commodities right now. So let's have a little look at this. Gold is looking good. You know, we, we had NFP and we kind of pushed lower where I was anticipating high, but it is what is near miss, near miss, taking out strong wick through, push back in, full fucking weekly retrace. Call it something else, man. Um, it looks good, but we're still waiting for some structure to develop. Um, over the weekly retrace, we could see this come back up and I wouldn't be surprised on that where this then just comes back up. What would be nice though is if we came up and we came up like this, correct, and then you pushed in and we sold. And I think that would be something that I am looking forward to. So I am going to be looking for this again, actually. I think gold is one that I'll be interested in to so just see if we can get that. If not, you know, continuations below, why not, um, where we kind of just push in, create something and go. Uh, that would make sense as well. I'm interested to see if we can get the short up there, though. That would be good. Oh, silver. Wow. Wow, silver is looking stunning. Do have that near miss, near miss though, near miss over here, that near miss there. But that weekly candle looks so good. Look at that daily push. You know, silver, gold, man, back to back brothers, killing it, killing it, honestly. But their near misses do put me off a little bit. Um, shit, silver committed, man. I could have took a message from the market here on this one if I was looking at it see kind of read through it but that would be the best trade that was a sick trade too um yeah but high high risk for me high risk as well damn there's some good trades in here though but situational high risk natural gas though on the other hand anyone looking at natural gas fucking hell wow natural gas is that is looking nice. Let me just invert that quickly for the buy. Oh no, for the sales is good. Um, yeah, natural gas, man. Natural gas. Four hours better. Just looking at it over here. Yeah, we had a structure in there. Over there, 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 there. It looks like we just go in, man. I think we could ride this wave. Do I have natural gas? I need to check if I have natural gas. But last time I saw natural gas, the spreads were a bit whack. I need to kind of read through this though, because I don't know if the third touch is, is coming, but looking at this structure, probably the override might be the best play here. So we have one, two, that doesn't really sell. We have that running channel there. We have this point here. Mm. Doesn't look like it's easy to trade, truly doesn't look easy at all but anyway we will follow our trading plan and see if we get a trade natural gas nice interesting i'll keep that here u.s oil oh man u.s oil is going on it are we in order for a pullback correction push correction correction push larger correction didn't quite feel it though we broke below Pushing down here. Yeah, I'm going to wait for this, man. I think it needs some development. But if it does come in here, create something like... Or if we did this, come in. Like, nah. What about a strong push-up? Correction. Push-up. Mm. Yeah. I would wait for... I don't know, man. It's not really my type of trade right now. It does look like it has potential. I just don't know if that's the trade I want to be taking on this to then continue a low one to what to there. It has potential, man. It definitely shows.
I think with the way the market's going, man, this could fucking sell. That is a momentum-filled sell as well. I would have to really look, keep an eye on, on US oil if I'm going to be taking a sell on this one, and I'm not too sure because I have a lot of other pairs. I have around about 13. Do you know what? I'll add it in the list and have a little look at it, but we'll have to wait and see. So um, just coming together now, we're looking at pretty much these pairs. These are the pairs that I have for the week. I think the week is looking good, really and truly. I think we have some stunning, stunning pairs on there. Um and I think with the week ahead, we can actually just see that um, in terms of positioning and in terms of the sequences that we'll be looking to get involved in, they look pretty good. And next week is also looking quite good as well. So I wouldn't, honestly, for De December alone, like, you know, it's, it's it's looking stunning. It's looking really, really good. Um, there's a lot of potential, a lot of opportunity. I think it just requires those developments and observations that come into play, but We'll definitely be able to see them and take advantage. So, guys, I hope this video was very useful. I know it did go on a little bit longer than anticipated. Um, I was looking to see if I could squeeze it into 60, but um, was able to get through it in the end. And, um, yeah, hopefully be able to finalize it tomorrow and move forward. So, as always, guys, thanks for watching and appreciate the love. And, yeah, catch you in the next video.